Can you talk about what this position means to you, what it means to be a part of the Lancaster City Police Department? Absolutely. This is an esteemed honor to be part of this uh, great organization. And uh, as we talked about earlier, coming uh, in on the heels of the protest, um, it, it's, it's great to be able to come in and, and assist the mayor uh, with her strategic plan of strong neighborhoods and, and community partnerships with the, our police department. And so that's, that's my primary goal. So, uh, you know, this week is the mayor's neighborhood week and we're out uh, doing walking audits of our neighborhoods. We're interacting with our community. Uh, the, the, the leadership of the, the city and of course our, our engagement team in the police department. And so it's so important to establish those, those community connections and build that rapport and, and those relationships. Uh, and so that's why we're out here and that's what I'm very, very excited to do and bring to the table. Talked about last summer and, and I don't know how much you've kind of studied up on it and looked into some of the issues in your time as interim chief, but. What did you kind of notice or note as something that you really felt like you personally could attack as chief, something that you felt like you could effectuate some real change? Well, I think um, primarily that rapport building in our community. Uh, so one of my first uh, assessments coming in was just putting my ear to the ground and listening and talking to people in the community. And what I heard very strongly was that they wanted to build that relationship. They wanted to partner with the police uh, department in, in our community, you know, to assist. And so those, that was a primary goal for me, uh, just listening, being responsive, being innovative in how we respond as a police bureau. And so um, one of the primary things that we talked about this earlier was the, the bike patrols. I heard that loud and clear. And so we were able to make that happen. And so I think that's been a huge success and we're gonna grow that program moving forward. I think our community uh, really, really responded to it. They love it. And so that's where, how we're gonna to continue to do business. We're gonna be continuing listening and being responsive. Why are you the, the right man for the job? Well, I think um, my experience uh, has brought me here. I, I don't think it's by any coincidence that I stand here today as a chief of police. Um, I feel like I've come full circle in my career uh, with the state police, with the military, starting my career here in Lancaster, um, having roots here in the city and coming back and reestablishing old connections and making new connections. And I just think my body of work uh, has brought me to this point and um, I think I'm the right person for the job because I really uh, connect with the mayor's strategy and what, you know, her plans for the city and the police department in terms of building that community partnership. And that, that's very important to me. It's kind of personal for me. Um, when I was out of law enforcement for maybe three and a half, four years, uh, being able to stand on the sidelines and watch the interactions of police, various police departments, not just Lancaster, but various police departments and communities of color. And, um, you know, I just thought that I had something to offer to bring to the table to rebuild those bridges. I mean, we've seen a lot over the last year, right? Of, yes. of kind of that community police relationship. A lot of people feel like it's not in a good place. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like at least you're, you're kind of agreeing with that assessment. Oh my God, yeah. Why is that? Why do you think that there has been this separation and it kind of feels like it continues to grow and then we get to the point in Lancaster where we kind of hit a boiling point last year? Yeah, so, you know, that, that relationship between police departments all over the United States and, and communities of color, I mean, this is nothing new. Uh, from a historical perspective, there's always been, always been contention. Uh, and, you know, it evolved into a very, very complex relationship. That uh, that as a police department, you have to have to be very intentional about how you approach rebuilding those relationships. So, I mean, we can go back. And this happened way before George Floyd, Rodney King. We can go back to the '60s. We can go back to the '40s, the '30s. This type of relationship has always exi existed, and I think the uh, the difference is nowadays the social media and the ability to you know broadcast uh, events you know, instantaneously and bring things to light. And so I, I just think it, it, it's all come to a head. And so now um, those of us in, in command executive leadership positions and police departments recognize that 
you know, you have to be, again, very intentional uh, and you have to recruit differently uh, the types of people that you bring on board that are more um, humanity driven as opposed to tactical and, you know, uh, militaristic. Uh, because at the end of the day, this is a people business, right? And it's about bringing back the humanity in a profession and treating people with humanity and compassion. And that's what's called for today, and that's what we're doing here in Lancaster. You've got a chance to, to know the guys and gals who are working underneath you. Are you confident with who's riding with you? I have to be. It's not like I could just, you know, throw in the cards and get a whole new deck. Um, I'm very confident. I, I've Fortunately, I've had the opportunity to interact with them over the past six or seven months, and uh, I'm, I'm excited about continuing to work with them and work for them uh, and work for our community. And I think, yeah, we have the right people in place to get it done. Altering the police department and the way that it's viewed into the future, what do you think is going to be the quickest way to kind of change the perception of the department and the men and women who serve? Yeah, I don't think there's a quick answer. I don't think it's going to be quick. I think it's going to be, the key is sustainability. The key is having a strategy, sticking to the strategy, and sustaining it. And so whenever my time is done here, whenever that may be, I hope that I've laid the foundation to continue on in terms of policy, uh, protocol, reputation, and legacy. And so that's, that's my goal. I just want to continue to move that needle one tick at a time. So I have no timetable on it. We're just going to keep grinding, and and uh, I think we'll be successful. Yeah, and you have a you have a wealth of experience. I don't even want yes. to undersell that. But and you're also a diverse candidate. So it just kind of feels like the right time, the right moment. And then you have experience in Lancaster. Are you are you excited to be here? I'm very excited. I'm trying to hold back my smile. I have a very big smile. So uh, yeah, it, it tends to be overwhelming sometimes. So yes, I'm very excited to be here. All right. Yes, some, thank you for some, that question. Like, quick three items you think, like what, bike patrols, walk, I mean, like what are your quick three items that you, things you want to address like quickly you think you could do in a, I mean, not, I, I don't think, like you said, it's going to change the relationship, but what are like three things maybe you want to try to tick off quickly? Well, bike patrols, as I've alluded to, uh, that was a response to our community. They really wanted it. Another uh, quick assessment that we were able to implement is our community engagement office. Uh, so, I uh, kind of reorganized the, the department to form a, a, a community engagement office. Uh, we now have 18 people in that office and we're out in the community and we're conducting community events and listening sessions and just engagement, engagement, engagement and building that trust. And it's important that we engage our community in non-enforcement type of uh, activities. And so that's that lends itself to that trust building and that rapport and that and, and recruitment and processes, yeah. uh, you know, that's going to lend itself to that. And that's my third one is, is recruitment. And I mean, ideally, I would love to have as many people from this community serve in our police department to serve this community. But it starts with building that trust, and that's what we're that's what we're aiming to do.